All right, so we're officially recording, so welcome to the Hangout for our first online meeting. Nice to see smiling faces, still going strong. Um, so I think just so we can kind of get the hang of it, and we have some new faces, I'm joining the Connecticut group with the Delaware group, so we have several others joining us. Um, I think we should do a round of check-ins, which is just say your name, your school, and what lesson you are working on uh, just recently before you joined the Hangout. Um, so I'm going to go in order. I see Andrew Engel first. Do you want to go first? Uh, yeah, uh, Andrew here. Uh, currently working on the uh, the mole mash, uh, the updated, uh, I think it's at 4.3. Uh, just uh, updating the pictures, the functionality, adding the if blocks and the score counters and everything. So everything's going well so far. Okay, Tony Quattrochi, Fitch High School. I'm in exactly the same place as Andrew is. I just got done with the 4.3 Android MASH projects. Uh, all right, uh, Brian, you wanna go next? Sure, I'm Brian Wadakor from Montville High School in Connecticut. I just finished the uh, switching on photos in the background and uh, just did the reflections on that. Sorry, tell us again which one you just finished. The uh, 4.3, the mashup. Uh, the projects. Yes, the project. Awesome. Uh, Patty? Yes, hi. Um, Patty Ann, I just finished um, the mashup as well and started working on the creative performance. Awesome. Um, the other Andrew? Hey, can you hear me? I unmuted? Yep. Oh, excellent. Okay, I actually went back to the, uh, the logo assignment because I just didn't feel right with it, so I went and redid that. So I'm a little behind the game, but I feel feel confident that I'll catch up. Okay, make sure you're doing those reflections too, all right? Excellent. Eric? Hey, how you doing? Um, Eric from Watertown. I'm doing the um, second mash. I'm having a little difficulty with the uh, Android ex uh, acknowledging my touch, but other than that, it's going fine. All right. Uh, Matt and Liz. Hi, I'm Liz Tibetti. Uh, Matt and I are both at a credit. Hi, I'm Matt. Liz said everything. I think we uh, missed out on Liz there. Maybe because the microphone wasn't pointed towards her. We got bits and pieces of it. So you want to try again? Hi, I'm Liz Kubecki. Um, I'm at the Academy of Aerospace and Engineering. And Matt and I are working on the Create Asset currently. Much better. Dan? Uh, all right. Well, uh, Dan Hughes here. Uh, I just finished up. I'm in North Haven High School. And... Uh, I just finished up the MASH projects, so everything went, went pretty well, so it was good. Good to hear. Carl? Hi, this is Carl. Uh, I'm in Greenwich at Condon of the Sacred Heart, and I'm also just finishing up with the MASH project. Awesome. So next to Carl, I am seeing Kristen, who is actually in uh, APSI training. So Kristen Violet is from Newtown High School. 
She's unable to use her audio, so she'll need to talk to the chat. So if you're in the chat, you'll be able to see what she's typing there. And she's working on Unit 3, a little bit behind, but she will be catching up. Um, and we're trying to partner her up with someone for the Create project. My first thought was Liz and Matt, but it looks like you guys were already meeting and talking. So um, not sure how far along you are with an idea yet, but if you're open to having Kristen join you, I think that might be good. Feel free to discuss that in the chat. I would say our app is about 50% done. Oh my goodness. No, that'd be hard. Oh my. Uh, so real quick, is there another group that maybe like, hasn't quite gotten started? They're still in the brainstorming phase? Nobody wants to volunteer. <laughs> I started a second create uh, just independently. If you want to join that one, you want to, you can join two create groups, but that'd be difficult. Yeah, I think we'll 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 end up figuring out. I know Carl is saying he's he's in Danbury. Um, I think we'll figure something out. Uh, Van, do you want to go? Sure, Van Metcalf, Trinity Pauling School in Pauling, New York. Uh, I live in Norfolk, so Farmington is not that far away, but right now I'm in Rhode Island, so that's not going to work. Um, just finished up the MASH projects, and uh, yeah, it's a little difficult because the, uh, the, the MASH demo is supposed to use the Vibrate, and uh, we don't have that on the... Uh, on the ASUS tablets, so, uh, but I did get it to work with the score, so that's where I am. Did you try making it make a sound? We can talk about this too, but as long as you um, have it make a sound or some acknowledgement that you had uh, actually touched the Android, that works as a substitute. Um, Josh? Hey guys, Josh Farside from Conrad School of Science in Wilmington, Delaware. Uh, um, currently at the point where I'm about to do reflections for the ball match. Everything's going well. Though. Did you guys hear that? Yep. Yep, thanks. Awesome. Happy you could join us. Um, Steven? Uh, Stephen Beal from uh, Stonington. Uh, everything's going good as I was going through. I, I kind of had some questions about the progression, which I put in my reflections of the way information was. Um, with particularly was the president's quiz and going back and doing that one. Um, but other than for that, everything else has been fine. Sounds good. So just a general comment that I've been looking through uh, your portfolios and I have like comments that I made, but I have to send them to you. I haven't sent them to you guys yet. So I promise to do that. Um, so we have uh, uh, Dan, our other Dan from Delaware. Are you there? Hi. Yep. Uh, Dan Bates from uh, First State Military Academy. Um, I'm traveling on business uh, in Annapolis. Um, I, about 75% through the mashups. Um, I'm having some Wi-Fi challenges because uh, I'm on government installation, but I think I have uh, workarounds on that. Okay, we can talk a little bit more. It sounds like a lot of people are working on those We can for today, which is the assignment. So we can talk a little bit more as soon as we're done with check-ins. Um, James, are you still there? You're muted. There you go. Oh, if we see you. Uh, Pauline, are you talking to me? Yep. 
Oh, yeah, I'm here. Um, I don't. I thought you were talking about James Sinsky. I haven't seen him on here. Um, yep, so I don't see him here either, but um, if you want to just give an introduction about who you are and who you've been working with, good to have you here. Sure, yeah, I'm checking in. I'm uh, James Alice. I'm an associate professor at University of Delaware and the facilitator for the Delaware cohort. Good to see uh, several of you on here on the Hangout. Um, try to help with whatever I can. Just uh, let us know. I've, I've seen a few discussion points on email through our forum already. Uh, so yeah, welcome back. You guys had a week off between Delaware and uh, restarting this. Hi, Jim. Hello, Ralph. How are you doing? Good. Good. All right. Um, so I see uh, Nick next. Do you want to go? Quick check in. Hi, guys. I just joined about a minute ago. Um, so just tell us your name and what school you're at. I'm Nick Busquet. I'm at Sitchard High School in Rhode Island. And traveling all the way to Connecticut to be with us. We it's love a beautiful it. drive. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks. Um, Sterling? Hi, I'm Sterling. I don't know if you guys can hear me. Um, Danbury High School, and I just finished the um, MASH project. Awesome. We heard you loud and clear. Um, Noah, I saw you typing. Can you – do you have audio? Okay. Let me go back, see if I can find it. Um, so Noah from Conard High School, West Hartford, Connecticut. Uh, he's also working on Android MASH and doesn't have a mic. So uh, lots of chat going back and forth, which is great. Feel free to use that. No problem, Noah. Larry? Uh, yep. Um, I've been working on the uh, MASH projects. I, I can't get my screen to recognize my touch, uh, so I can't really uh, get the score moving. But uh, anyway, that's where I am. I, as far as that, I made the ch uh, change that was mentioned earlier about changing from vibrate to sound, and all of a sudden everything works, so maybe you might want to try that. Okay, thanks. Yep, make sure you have a canvas and then you can use the sound to, to give you some feedback to let you know that, that it worked. Um, Angie? Hello, Angie Parsons. I'm a Cisco instructor at Hopson High School in Delaware. I just finished up the 4.3 MASH project as well. Um, I still think I'm a little the more dependent on the solutions part than I'd like to be, but I mean, I'm, I'm progressing. So I guess that's a plus. Um, I think one more tango. Yes, um, my name is Tanja Myers, and I'm currently working on the 4.3 MASH project. Awesome, thank you. And um, did I forget anybody? Is anybody else there? Say hello. We got everybody. Awesome. All right, so um, again, uh, I didn't want to, don't want you to feel like we, have wasted any time. I just wanted to make sure everybody had a chance to meet everybody since we're coming together for the first time as a larger group. So these are all the folks that are in that Google group. When you send out a discussion, everybody is there uh, to help answer questions uh, that you might have. So feel free to post discussion questions there or questions that you have. Um, some of you are doing that already, which is great. Uh, continue sending any questions that you have to the entire group and feel free to respond to one another. I hope that you will. 
Um, so today you were working on Android MASH, and it sounds like a lot of you are on the projects, which is great. It means you're keeping up with, with the assignments. Um, so overall, I think it was finding out that your tablets did not have the, the vibration. And I think we had maybe discovered that before uh, at some point, but they cannot vibrate. So you may need to use something like adding a sound to play a sound when you touch the Android instead. Um, are there any like other major questions that you had about concerns about the Android MASH projects as you were doing them? There's a lot of us, so I hope we don't cut each other off. Did anybody give uh, a shot at trying to uh, calculate misses at all? And, and were you successful? Did you run into any issues? If you did it successfully, any pointers for those who may not have tried it yet? My goal was to try that later today, but I haven't got to trying that out yet. Yeah, I was going to do the same thing, but when you missed a screen or missed a, the guy, it was going to say, like, ouch or almost or have it say something as well. But I haven't gotten there just yet. Okay, and Noah says in the chat he's got it working. Anybody else? I decided to put a, this is Matt, I decided to put a counter in um, that allows someone to sort of win the game. So it counts up to a certain amount and then it can reset the game at any time as well. Nice. How about did anyone play around with the challenging uh, idea of changing the mole, speed of the mole as the player reaches, as the player's score goes up? Yeah, that was a pretty complicated uh, if then else, if then else kind of series uh, to change the speed. It, I, th I really struggled in the beginning, not with the vibrate part, because I remember that the vibrate didn't work, but just the speed was too fast already. Like one second, it was, it felt like uh, on the tablet, it was changing so fast. Like I couldn't tell if I was hitting it or not. So I really slowed it down to begin and then have it work up to a faster speed as it gets closer to winning the game. So how do you speed of the mole? What, what parameter or property do you have to change? With the clock changing the, uh, the, the milliseconds? Right. Yep. I did that as well. I have it so that um, they score up to five points. After those five points, um, they go to the next level. So the score is um, zeroed out again, but it goes faster until they eventually choose exit as a way of ending a game. Uh -huh, nice. And I guess what Nat's referring to with the complicated if else is that you could have several levels, like if they get above 10, if they get above 15, and each time you change the uh, speed of the clock. Yeah. I, uh, I did a similar thing. Uh, I used uh, Modulo. Uh, if it was like divisible by five, I in, or, uh, decreased the milliseconds when the clock timer shot off. I went through a little bit easier. I just uh, took 0.8 times the current millisecond value and uh, stored it back into the milliseconds. And I did that every time the score was equal to six. And so you'd play till 10. And so they gave it kind of a level uh, thing. Neat. Neat, neat solutions. All slightly different, but nice.
territory, pardon me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like you guys are all on top of that um, mole mash or Android mash, as we called it. Uh, did you enjoy it? I thought it was pretty good. It allowed me to explore and uh, uh, I liked the creative part because I was able to do that without following the video. And so I liked being able to see how easy it was to create and change things. As you might guess, this type, type of game is very popular among certain, certain students. Um, and actually we've been talking about maybe thinking about other ways to introduce animation that wouldn't be quite so, uh, you know, uh, uh, touch them up game or whatever you want to call this type of game. Um, I, I was telling the Hartford group that I was grading the college board uh, pilot exams and I saw way too many shoot them up games uh, based on this kind of thing. Uh, mostly having to do with hitting, hitting hitting buttons to fire things at objects rather than touch them. But um, anyway, it's something we've been talking about and thinking about. We are not going to do anything this year, but something to keep in mind. <laughs> someone did that? Did someone actually use their little sister or brother's picture on the uh, app? <laughs> I saw one version with presidents before. That's all I'm going to say. The, the oldest version I saw was Whack-A-Dole when Bob Dole was running against Bill Clinton. I'm dating myself. <laughs> what do you want to talk about? Yeah, how did the uh, how did the persisting photos lesson go yesterday? So yesterday, although I'm guessing some of you might have done it today, Monday was fourth. So, I have a question about the database. Say again. Okay. I, I have a question about how to do something with databases. Is there a way to store? like multiple tags and values all at once instead of just using that like store each time. So if I want to store like say a whole list of things as tags and then a corresponding list of values, is there an easier way to do that? Uh, yes, you can store a list in a database. But that's, it still has a single string tag for it, right? Well, you want a list of t names and uh, tags and values? Correct. So like essentially storing like almost a one table at once, yeah. You can certainly do that because you can store a list of uh, 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 two things each under one tag though. Under one tag, but is there a way to store it? Like, so the example I'm using, I was making an app where, you know, people could look up details on restaurants, right? So the tag would be the name of the restaurant and then under that would be stored information about that restaurant. But rather than going through and, and clicking that store for the database each time and then putting in the restaurant name for the tag and then putting in the information, is there a way to just like put all that in a list and then have it create a database from the list? Yeah, there's a way. Um, so in the, um, in the, let's see, in the follow up to that president's quiz, we're going to look at something similar. So okay. store, for example, this will be coming probably next week, but um, what you would store in that case, one way to do this is you would store a list of restaurants, right? Mm -hmm. And then you would read in that list and every time they pick a restaurant, you mm -hmm. go back to the database and you look up the data for that restaurant. Yeah, that's what I was, I was trying to do like a list picker, right? So they would pick something kind of like that map thing we saw. They would pick something from a list, right? And then it would look that up in the database yeah, we can't hear you very well. Oh. But uh, 
Next week, we're going to learn how to use a Firebase database, which is okay. online. Okay. And we'll learn um, we'll learn a similar technique to what you're what you're thinking about. But okay. um, for your create project, I would recommend keeping it you know pretty simple. Okay. <laughs> this this one here. Yeah, we, we switched ideas, so I think it's simpler at this point. Thank you. In the, in the persisting photos project, wasn't one of the exercises to store a list of photos that you could choose from, or was that, um, was that a challenge? I'm going to figure out how to do a list, like store a list under like a given string tag. I was just wondering about storing like multiple tags all at once. Yeah, but you were able to store a list of photos under one tag. Yeah, yeah. Well, yep. well that's good. I mean, that's, uh, that's fairly advanced right there. And we'll learn even more advanced techniques later in the next lesson. It, it's connected to President's Quiz. Yeah, you just use that index, right? It's, it depends on the order of the pictures or the order of the information or the order of the restaurant, right? So if you have three lists, you could just use the index to keep track between the three. Right. Yep. And we're going we're gonna, to, in the 6.5, which is under development, we're going to learn how to load the entire data structure in at one time, rather than having to go out and load it three times. We'll, 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 I'm getting ahead of ourselves, but you'll, you'll see. It's cool. What about President's Quiz? So, uh, question, with the, um, Camera app, is it, um, I know we talked about it before, Pauline. Um, is there a way to get the pictures not coming through? I didn't wonder if somebody else was able to capture the picture who was having problems before and now can do it. So, Steven, I think you were the one who had trouble. Did, you, did we figure it out? Did anything happen with any updates or anything? Yeah, when I looked at it, um, I even uninstalled it and completely reinstalled the camera and it didn't work. I tried using a third party camera um, and that would reload the app, but it must have been storing the photos somewhere else because it wasn't pulling up the photo. So wherever it's looking for the default directory, the third party camera app I installed wasn't saving the photos there, I guess. Um, so I haven't really found a way around it or a solution to that problem. So, um, did you check to make sure that all of the updates had absolutely been done? You went into settings and you checked to make sure there was no updates available? Yeah, I did. And, and after checking that, I uninstalled it. Um, and I even checked the version against some other people in the class at the time. And they had the same version camera I had. Uh, so I really don't know. So uh, some of you did get it to work, right? So you, I know you all have the same, same version tablet, same model. Um, some of you did get it to work, right? So if you take the photo with the camera, you hit check mark, it puts it on the canvas. It works for me. That's weird. Same here, it works just fine. Yeah, it works, works fine here too. I mean, it, it worked on my phone when I did it on my phone. It was just, so it's not the code.
I'm sure if you could have, a, if you have another device, you can possibly test it on. Um, the, the emulator would also work, but I'm not sure I want to tell you to go through that that so, process. So, 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 so Eric, trouble. Eric's having yeah. trouble. Too. Let's see if it's called. Yeah, when I hit the check mark on the picture, it goes to the camera. When I hit the check mark on the camera, it still stays on camera. It doesn't leave there and go to uh, back to the application. Yeah, and, and that is exactly what was happening with mine. I hit the check and nothing happened. So this, there's also there's another component that we don't really talk we don't talk about in the course we haven't used it but if you look through I believe it's called an image picker um, if you're having trouble with the camera that might be another way to like take the picture with the camera separately and then see I believe it's the image picker that will pull up all the images and let you select an image that way so it's kind of a workaround because you can't hit the check mark uh, but just so you can still use the the device that you have and, and see some results with it. Um, I'm so, not sure if that will also give you a problem depending on what's going on. So when you, if you just take it, with, forgetting the app for a moment, if you just take a picture with the camera on the device, does it take the picture and store the picture in your gallery? Yes. I have no idea. We're puzzled. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so do you want to talk about the uh, sign project? Or oh, I can't. Oh, I can't. So we're just going to. Uh, up here the create one pairs and we're going to talk about the create project which will be your assign your larger assignment over the next few days um, So Dan uh, Bates, are you still there? Yep, I'm here. Are you working with James? Yes. Okay. So here's here's the list we have of partners: Larry and Carl from Hartford, Stephen and Brian from Hartford, Tony Q and Andy Messelitzer from Hartford, Noah and Andrew Engel from Hartford, Leon and Dan from Hartford, Liz and Matt from Hartford. Eric and Sterling from Hartford, Patty and Tanja from Delaware, Van and Nick from Hartford, Kristen and Question Mark from Hartford, Dan B and James S from Delaware, Angelia and Josh from Delaware. So does that confirm to everybody's uh, understanding of partners? Yes. Yes. So Yeah, so so bear in mind so these create tasks for the final one. Uh, this one should be even shorter, but for the final one, your students are going to be given 12 hours of class time for the entire project. So that means 
from conception to elevator pitch to development to presentation in the format that the college board wants it, which is they want a one minute video with or without narration. I suggest narration um, and a, a listing a source, a listing of their source code and an answer to certain questions about their project and about their code. So um, for this create task, which is just practice, one of the main reasons for doing it is to get you to see what the steps are. And uh, we don't expect you to spend 12 hours on it. So, um, you know, coming up with a modest project uh, that you can get done working in pairs and uh, presented in a day or two is, is what, we're, what we're shooting for. So tomorrow, for tomorrow, um, working on your elevator pitch and maybe the design of your u, u, uh, user interface. Um, and then Thursday, uh, coding, in, in completing the coding on Thursday and creating the write-up on Thursday morning or Thursday you know, during the day. So you have, really have two days to work on it along with other things. Um, well, I guess that's all they have to do for two days. So you have two full days to work on this. But keep it modest, you know, even for your students, when you, um, we don't think they need to create, based on what I saw at this grading session a couple weeks ago in Kansas City, they don't need to create elaborate projects for this college board. They may want to create elaborate projects for their own interests, which is great, but they don't need to do it for the college board. So do you want them to share their elevator pitch and brainstorming with us before they get started? Yeah, I mean, I think tomorrow's hangout would be a good time to go over the elevator pitch why don't we plan on each team presenting their elevator pitch? And an elevator pitch for a normal, you know, a New York City building of modest size, say 20 stories, is about what, a minute? Are we talking about world, you know, um, what's a huge uh, building? Sears Tower, you know, two minutes. So it should be pretty short. It's an elevator pitch. You have to get it across in the elevator. Um, so if you present your elevator pitches tomorrow, and then if we hear ideas that we think are going to take you way more than all day Thursday to do, we can we can try to rein you in, which is usually what we end up having to do because most uh, most students, and you're being students now, are, are far too ambitious in what they'd like to accomplish with the app, which is admirable, but um, we only have a day or two to do this. Does that sound like a plan? Tomorrow, it does. tomorrow at three, we'll hear your elevator pitches. If you have questions about Target now, now would be a good time to ask. And if you have thoughts and you're batting them around and you want some feedback, both on, in terms of is this feasible to do in two days and also in terms of uh, what kinds of uh, components would you need to do this or algorithm would you need to do this. So I hope everybody has read through the Create One assignment, which is linked in for the Hangout today. You click on um, the pacing guide, and you look at the underneath 3 p.m. hangout, there's a create one explanation with the assignment there, um, the steps that are there, um, so the format of your elevator pitch and the little template that you can use. There's a link to the, this, the wireframe template for you to help you design your your app it might be a good idea to work on that with your partner and you're doing your elevator pitch and post that up to your portfolio so this is one where when you end up having your write-up you could have pretty much the same content for each partner 
but each partner should have a write-up on their page. So in some cases, we've had teachers say, okay, you better work in a Google Doc together, and then they post the end results. And you can choose to do that, or you can choose to do two separate write-ups. Um, I personally think the Google Doc is a good way to collaborate and, and do the write-up together until you're ready to post to your portfolio. Why don't we take a quick look at the rubric that the college board has its current rubric for the create task. You know how to find it? Yeah, just click on the link for today's call. Pauline's going to share her screen so we can look at this together because I just want you to see um, the scope of what they're expecting. If you go scroll down in this document and look at their draft rubric, I strongly think this is going to change because we complained a lot about it, we graders. But let's look at column three, which is where you need to be for max scores. Um, first thing is the video that you produce, the one minute video demonstrates the running of at least one feature of the program that illustrates the program's intended purpose as described in the written response or the video narration. So you can either narrate the video to show the purpose of the app uh, or, and or write a written response that describes the purpose of the app. That's uh, row one, creating um, the, the program's purpose or the app's purpose. Row two, your response describes at two points in the development process how the difficulties and or opportunities encountered were resolved and incorporated as part of the incremental and iterative development process. So they really like these incremental and iterative buzzwords. So in your response there, you're supposed to show that you were doing some kind of incremental development. And the response must identify at least one point in the development process that was completed independently. That means um, in, in when the student turns this into the college board, if they only describe their project in terms of a team of we, we did this and we did that without any reference to this is the part I did, they would get no points uh, in that category there for that. And then row three, the selected, you have to select an algorithm from your project for the college board and the selected algorithm integrates, this is really where we complained a lot integrates two or more algorithms and integrates mathematical and or logical concepts, selection and iteration to create a new algorithm. I find that very confusing. I don't think you should worry too much about selection and iteration. Um, I think you, you should at least have selection in the algorithm you pick. So somewhere in your app, you wanna make sure you have selection statements involved in an algorithm. Um, and the response identifies the algorithm's purpose in the program and accurately describes how at least two of the algorithms function independently, as well as in combination to create the new algorithm to achieve the program's purpose. So this is something we're gonna to wanna to talk about after you try this yourselves to see uh, what kind of advice we'd wanna be giving our students. And lastly, the select, you have to uh, circle an abstraction in your program that uh, integrates math and or logical concepts and serves to manage complexity of the program. And the response indicates that an abstraction was developed and accurately explains the abstraction, its function and how it helps to manage complexity of the program. So for this particular part of the grading, what they had in mind was pretty much a procedure definition and use of a procedure in your program. Okay, you can unshare. So I think you can see from that that you, you wouldn't need a very complex app to satisfy those criteria for the rubric. And, and the student wouldn't be getting lots of points because the app is complex. They earn their points by being able to pick out little parts of the app that satisfy this very narrowly focused rubric. So any questions about that, or thoughts, or comments?
I have a question about the um, requirement in terms of um, having iterations. So does that essentially mean that in an algorithm, we have to have some sort of uh, loop? That's what they mean. But I, I, my guess is they're going to back off of that because we gave them all kinds of grief over that, okay. which we think is inherently unfair to blocks based um, event driven programming language. Okay. You basically have an event loop um, constantly uh, looking for events to process. So I suppose uh, we didn't try this on them, but a student could pull out uh, a set of event blocks and say, these blocks are embedded in an implicit loop in my programming language. And uh, look at their selection and there's logic and math. So not clear how, how they would react to that. But I think they're just going to drop the and and make it an or. Okay. Like so we could, would, for example, a clock firing be counted in that case? Like, could we talk about how an event occurs every time a clock fires? Yeah, you know, I mean, I don't, I just don't know because they have a very narrow conception of what an algorithm is. The okay. person I talk to actually thinks you can't have a real algorithm unless you have iteration and selection. I don't know where this idea came from, but it somehow found its way in. Okay. So, but a clock loop, we talk about it all the time. The clock ticks and something happens. So you, you, you have this sort of um, indirect loop that you can't actually, you can write pseudocode for it, but you don't have a actual iter iteration statement per se. In yeah. Right? So okay. That's, I don't know how they would respond to that, frankly. Okay. Thank you. So I would say, at a minimum, try to include an if-else algorithm in your app. Look for a way to do that. Now, it could be you have a menu and they have to select from a menu and do certain things. But I would say you want to have an if-else and you want to have a procedure definition in there. Actually, it's just a logo app, <laughs> right? <laughs> Submit that, get a five. <laughs> Any other questions? So you all ready to go and be creative? Sounds good. Any last questions or should we knock off a few minutes early? So what is the exact requirement for tomorrow's meeting that we have done? Just go through that one more time for me. Your elevator pitch with your partner and your storyboard or design. So tomorrow everybody will get about one minute to present their app idea and we'll let you know, know like yay or nay or if there's anything you need to alter to make sure you have uh, just the two days to complete and you can get everything done in those two days. Um, if you want to start like designing it in App Inventor, I think that's something you could start doing if you would like, but we're just looking for the elevator pitch and the, the storyboard, the wireframe. The, the instructions are pretty broad. Can you give us an example of one that's been used in the past? One, uh, one create project? Yeah. Well, you could take, say, um, a variation of uh, the soundboard app as my create project, or a variation of Paint Pot, or a variation of President's Quiz, or a variation of uh, Android Mash. Any of those would suffice. So, it could right. be your own customization of one of those apps with some you know, uh, features that you've added in. So I like how Ralph is being very broad with his answers even still. And that's, you know, it's not that we don't want to tell you, you know, specific examples is that we don't want to 
influence the creative process, right? So we want to give you a general sense of what you should be aiming for, but we don't want to implant certain ideas in your head. We want you to be creative with what you're doing. But that should be what you're doing with your students too. So forgive this, uh, may, maybe you guys talked about this briefly, um, but this is still needing to be like a socially, whatever, however they phrase it in the, in the vernacular of the uh, APCSP curriculum, but it's like um, socially helpful application. Socially useful. Socially useful. That's, a, that's, socially useful. that's Sorry. a requirement that mobile CSP has put in there to focus yeah. the ideas about socially useful, being able to be use it in the community. But for our purposes, like, you don't want us to focus on that? I mean, I mean, no, sure. I think it would be good to focus on that. If okay. You I'm just, I'm just making sure. The board isn't going to focus on that. That's not any part of their. Oh, that's, that's, that's just strictly in the mobile CSP curriculum. It has nothing to do with what the college board is looking for. Yes. Right. Roger that. Okay. Thank you. One of the themes of our, our course, I think it's good. And if you can come up with one that that's, you know, socially useful in a broad sense, it doesn't have to save the world. Okay, great. Thanks, guys. All right. Good. See you all tomorrow. Same time, same station. <laughs> Lots of smiling faces, I hope. Have a good day. We'll see you tomorrow. And if you have questions during the day, we're both checking our email constantly. So, oh, yes. Um, fire away. But, but uh, send them to the group. Right. In case we're not here, maybe one of the other uh, participants will be able to answer. I'm going to end the recording.